today, now that I've got the shop bench clean, which it doesn't seem like it ever is, um, I've got some work that I need to do on the old Ford tractor. Here's the issues that I've been having, and they're not really terrible, but troublesome. So this hydraulic ram for the steering seeps out of there. I'm going to try to lift this up and rebuild it with the cylinder in place. The next thing I need to do is these seals on these knuckles are leaking uh, right down here on the bottom and it just seeping fluid out there. Everywhere else seems to be fine. This is on both sides. And then, uh, like I had said in a previous video, this valve here for the bucket it's not really working properly. I'm going to take it apart and see if there's anything at all that's serviceable in it. I don't know that I can get that original valve new again since this is like a mid 80s, late 80s tractor. Uh, but there's several valves that are, you can put a two stick on here, kind of inconvenient. And they're not really very expensive. And I have to change some of the plumbing that goes in here on the bottom because it's hard plumbed in. But, you know, we'll see what we can do on that. So let's get the front end up in the air and get started on those knuckles, get the tires off, get everything ready. I'm gonna have to figure out what parts I'm gonna need and order those. So let's get started. Tough seal to change in there.
wheel you need to take out. Let's go take this to the bench. Mark this with a T for the top. Top um, driver's side. It doesn't look like it's any different, but just in case. All right, so here's my dilemma here. This outer wheel seal was leaking a pretty good amount. You know, it wasn't terrible for so many years, but I did have to clean quite a bit of funk off of there. And in order to get to that seal underneath here, I've got to disassemble this and push the shaft down the bottom. You know, the whole, uh, the whole piece got to come out the bottom. And I do have a press. I don't have a collar that I can put underneath this ring gear to hold it while I press this bearing off and that ring gear off and um, I can put a piece under the collar here and try to see if I can use that as, a, as the, the point to hold it and press everything out at one time uh, but I could break this this uh, flange and boy if I tell you if I break this flange I'm probably hosed you know so at any rate I think I'm going to do this right here and I'm just going to put a moderate amount of pressure on it, watch the flange to see if it, how bad it's flexing. And as far as I know, everything may just slide out of here. So we'll, uh, we'll put a little pressure on and see what happens. Okay, so here's the choices on this. I could take it to a shop that can press it, which I hate to do, or I can put it back together for right now, keep an eye on it. It's really not terribly hard to get this outer piece off there. You just lose all the oil out of the knuckle, the 89 way. So I think I'm gonna nail this back in there, uh, buy a new seal for the knuckle itself on the, the pivot knuckle part, and put it back together, so. Let's, uh, let's get that ordered. All right, so hold on just a second. I was looking at this other side, and I noticed that this bearing, the height of it is much higher up this way than this one. This one's pressed down further. And I noticed this has a little bit of play in it back and forth. So let's see if, if this will slide off there. This may be just a slide fit because it, it fits into this area right here and it, it sandwiches in there so it can't really go anywhere. Oh yeah, look at that. Now look at this. This is just splined onto that shaft. You would think that would come off. Oh, look at that, it just slipped right off. All right, then. Look at that. And look at there, that's got a, a little snap ring on it. How the hell, that's broken. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it gets captured in here. I think it does, it captures right inside there. 
Yep. Look at that, guys. All right. And there's that seal. Very nice. Crisis averted. All right, let's see what happens when we try to take the innards out of this thing. I'm gonna to try to get this outer collar loose. If I can get that loose, take this uh, nut off the bottom and then slide the whole the old piston out of there. So let's try that real quick. Well, it's a shocker. It's, I can get it off and I didn't have to make a special tool for it. Yeah, so that might not, that might not flex down well enough with that mount right there. It's going to, So that part of it's probably good. The problem is it's leaking through this seal on the inside and I can't replace this without taking this off. They probably make a kit for this. Let's see if we can find that. All right, let's go ahead and try to take this cover off here and see what we can see in this valve area, see if there's something we can repair. Well, I'm gonna need to take the third function valve off. Okay, so here's where I think that relief valve is, and it looks like it's adjustable somehow on the outside. I just can't find hardly anything about this on the internet. Uh, this is for the lift arms, and this is for the curl. You can see how this works. When you lift back here, it pivots backwards and forwards. Look how dry that is. That thing is not leaking a bit. And when you do side to side to do the, to do the bucket curl back and forth, you can see how that pivot works on that. Pretty, uh, pretty ingenious actually. So let me see if I can do a little research on this valve. I don't really want to just take it out and I really don't want to take this whole valve out to be honest with you. So let's, uh, let's do a little research on that. Okay, so it looks like this, um, this adjustment nut just tensions this spring more so you can take it and loosen the lock nut, tighten the screw and adjust what pressure it relieves at. Um, and this must push on some kind of valve on the inside. Let's get a magnet and see if something comes out. Oh yeah. So that goes in there like that. And the spring just holds this pressure relief valve in there. Um, and I don't even know how you'd be able to tell if something like this was not working. I think I will um, Google it and see if I can figure something out. Okay, so here's how this pressure relief valve components go together here. And 
I've found these online <clears throat> at Messix. Whatever component this is, and it's got a little ball in the end of it, I soaked it and cleaned it. This component is $100 for this piece. And I think I, I think I saw this in there as well as part of the components offered separately. And it was, uh, you know, 50 or 60 bucks for that. And it fits just inside of there like this. So from what I can tell, this beveled edge sits up inside there to hold back pressure, depending on how much spring pressure is pushing against it. And uh, <clears throat> what I noticed about this piece is that the cone part of it was kind of messed up. And, um, and I just ran some uh, polishing compound on that drill so I can clean that area up. And I thought maybe it hit as well on this back face because there are some parts on this uh, that looks like oil is bypassing. I mean, a good strong one right there. And that might be just why it's dropping down slowly over time. It's just seeping past that point. And I don't even see a good surface on this to hit right around the outside edge. It does not fit down inside of this little grooved area. But I'm gonna I'm gonna clean it up, put it back together, and see how she works. Okay, so I got a huge problem. That pressure valve that I'll show you right now. This one piece right here, I threaded it in, and I got this piece put all the way in there perfectly. And the little valve that goes inside of it that I'll show right here, this one, I got it put up inside the cavity that it has to go to and it fell down. It didn't go all the way in there and it fell down. And to, and to try to get it out of the cavity that it fell down in, I was using a magnet here, a magnet on the piece of a weed eater line, tweezers, a piece of coat hanger, and none of it worked to get it out. I ended up buying this little magnet right here that'll, that'll bend. Let me show you what I'm talking about here real quick. So here's the spool valve. This is where the pressure switch goes in or pressure bypass, whatever it is. And I put this cap on it just to cover it up. Okay, it's real difficult to see, but inside of here where that valve goes in, there's a cavity just below where the lower hose comes in, and that little piece fell down in there, and it's, and it's stuck in there. And I couldn't get it out. Oh, this may not bend enough. Close. Let me show you as well, in order to, if I can't get it out, I've got to take this line off, and this line is back here, and I can't get to it. These are all hard lines, and I can't get this valve and raise it up, there's just no room. So let me get this other magnet I've got real quick. Okay, so I've got this one right here. Let me, uh, let me see if I can bend that end and get it to go down in there real quick. beautiful whoo all right let's put it together let's do this all right that looks pretty good
So I think let's take this jam nut loose and let's turn this in about a half a turn. Okay, good guys. Now that we got this back together, I don't know if that'll work. I won't be able to really test it till we get out to the land and put some weight on that bucket. But while we're waiting on the parts to come in for the front end on the on the Ford, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run to Home Depot and I'm going to take this trailer, go down there and, and buy some wood to put on this real quick. It won't take just a minute. So let's start on that. All right, let's put a tape measure on this and see what we got to have width wise. That's just over 76 inches, uh, and, and these are 12 inch boards that are in here. And I'm going to look and see what the cheapest route is to put 10 inch boards across here, and then how many 12 inch boards and, and go the cheapest route. I'm just going to use regular wood, and I'm probably going to just top coat it with some linseed oil. So let's uh, go check some wood out. Oh, yeah, so one thing that happened to me when I was leaving the house right now was a, a pretty good little wake up call. God will do that to me sometimes. He'll slap me upside the head. When I hooked this trailer up right now at the house, the, the hitch right here was locked and I had it resting on the ball. I did not realize that it wasn't down on the ball. I don't, I don't know how I didn't notice that. I've done this a million times. Hooked the safety chains up. When I left out of the house, I got down at the end of the block and I heard, heard a big old bang looked in the mirror and the trailer was kind of lopsided and this had bumped off and fell on the ground and was dragging behind and only stayed safe because the chains were on it right so that's a good a great wake-up call for me to always be here and double check this kind of stuff and thank goodness it wasn't that I wasn't going down the freeway with a tractor on it and it probably I probably still would have maintained everything okay it would have ruined that jack but with the weight of the tractor on it pushing down the ball I might have made it a pretty good ways until maybe I went over railroad tracks and then it would have come off but a good little wake-up call for me to just double check all this stuff uh, before I leave out of the house you know what I mean okay so the 12 by 16s are 1947 each and these actually measure out 11 inches we need 76 inches, so 11 times 7 is 77 inches. So seven of these, seven times, that was 1947. So that's 136 bucks for the for 12 inch boards. And then the 10 inch is the next size down. They're 1495 a piece for the 16 footers. Nine boards, so nine times 1495. It's 134 it's a couple of dollars cheaper for this there'll be a little waste and the 12 inch boards it's going to be like almost exactly so uh, let's just and it's not just a couple of dollars more so let's get um, let's get some of those 12 inch ones here I'm still waiting on Home Depot to come off this high price on this pegboard because I need about, uh, I think, seven sheets, six sheets for the shop. So we'll wait for that to come down a bit. Before we start on that trailer over here, I wanted to show you uh, what I did on Gilbert's, Plumber Gilbert's tractor. You remember this tractor from a video a while back that I had the injection pump rebuilt and put it in there. Uh, but, the, but I was going to borrow this from him so I could do some backhoe work out there at, the, at Perrin. And it, of course he was going to let me borrow it, but he said, hey, would you look and see if you can fix these rams down here leaking? And these are the rams that this uh, bucket arm will go back and forth on. 
see this black ram right here i replaced that for him one of his guys bent that somehow and i replaced that and he also said this one here was leaking as well so after i took this apart on my tractor to rebuild it i thought you know what i'll do the same thing on this one here for him and so i got one side out and i pulled the piston and the, the ram out of the cylinder and uh, I looked online to see if I could find any parts for a coyote. And boy, you can't find anything. There's nothing, no part numbers, nothing. I had already ordered the kit for the old blue tractor here. That kit to rebuild that uh, from Messix was uh, right at $100 for the seals. I know these seals are expensive. So I went to a local place here in Fort Worth, American Hydraulics, I believe. I thought, well, maybe they could match the seals up for that outer part on that ram. Uh, just to keep from leaking i mean that doesn't have to do any lifting it's just swinging the arm back and forth so i went there and i was a little surprised at the price of these seals not real surprised but a little surprised here they are so right here is the uh the piston and the uh the, the ram part of mine on my tractor and all i needed for gilbert's was the sweeper seal here i think that's called a dust seal maybe and uh, there's maybe one or two seals on the inside that keep this fluid from coming out. I didn't think that any of this piston part was bad. And um, so I thought, man, I could probably get out pretty cheap. They ought to be able to do that. So here's the price on this stuff. What we had to do is get four. I wanted both sides. And I, we needed four of these seals to go inside of this collar piece. And then the one little dust seal. So that's six seals total, three on each side. Here they are right here. So you have the two dust, and then these four are actually, to them, actually the same, and they're metric. So it takes two of these per, per side. These right here were 44 bucks a piece. These two wiper seals were $33 a piece. You know, I guess that's pretty normal considering the whole kit for this one, which is going to be the piston side, and this one, uh, you know, is a hundred dollars. So it doesn't surprise me they're forty-four a piece on these, but it's still a little shocking. That was two hundred and sixty-three dollars for these seals right here. And I went ahead and took this one apart as well. And not only did it need the seals it was leaking here, after I pulled the, the piston out with the shaft, the piston seals were messed up too. And so when I took it back over to American, I said, hey, match me up some seals, no problem. $250 for the seals on this and the two piston seals that go on the inside. That's really high, but you know, she's not leaking any oil now. And as soon as I finish the trailer, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and load this thing up and we'll take it out to Perrin next time I go out there Let's move Gilbert's tractor over here out of the way back this trailer up in here and we'll do this trailer Still waiting on parts to come in for a blue here